This video is supported by Brilliant. Over the last couple of years on this channel, I've had something of a series of videos on various types of battery storage technology. Uh, it's kind of an informal thing, but um, it's a popular topic, and there's always some new technology coming out, so there's no end to the topics that I have to cover. I've covered liquid metal batteries, redox flow, uh, lithium ion, obviously. Most recently, I talked about aluminum air batteries. And every single one of these videos, as I'm working on the script and as I'm getting ready to put that video out, Matt freaking Farrell beats me to it. So, of course, while I was working on a video for iron air batteries, there's Matt Farrell just cutting in line. But, as they say, it's not about who does it first, it's about... Who does it best? Of course, Matt has better graphics than I do, so I'm still screwed. The point is, if you've seen Matt's video, I don't know, maybe there's no reason to watch this one, unless you just want to hear what my take on it is, which, if that's the case, then you're in luck, because I'm going to present this topic with puppies. Check and mate, Matt. And if you haven't seen Matt's video, then get ready to learn something and look at puppies. I had no idea in October when I made that video about oxygen that the stuff that I talked about in that would be relevant in so many other videos. It was called Oxygen is Killing You, and it was about how oxygen is one of the most corrosive elements in the world, and yet, paradoxically, it seems to be the thing that makes life possible. And it makes a lot of things possible when it comes down to it. Pretty much everything is transformed or powered by combustion, or oxidation. As I covered in the aluminum air battery video, oxygen reacts with aluminum to create aluminum hydroxide. And by the way, fun fact, anytime you look at aluminum, what you're really seeing is this outer coating of aluminum hydroxide. You've probably never seen aluminum in your entire life. Well, it works the same with iron. Oxygen reacts with iron to create iron oxide, also known as rust. And this process gives off just a little bit of energy. But before we get too far into how these batteries work and everything, um, I feel like at the beginning of every single one of these battery videos, I have to explain why battery storage is needed to boost renewable energy production and everything. Um, I, think, I think I'll approach this one in a little bit different way, though. So the reason why we talk about all these different types of battery storage is because each one of these battery storage solutions have their own specific use cases. And the more of these use cases that we can fulfill with different types of batteries, the better. Lithium ion is great for EVs because it's very energy dense, which is great for mobility, smaller batteries, they can be uh, charged thousands of times and they can produce a lot of power, which is great for all the zoom zooms. And they're great for home storage and grid storage too, but every battery that goes into home and grid storage solutions are batteries that aren't going into cars. And that's a lot of batteries. Home energy storage was almost a $7 billion market in 2020, and the grid storage sector is expected to grow tenfold between 2019 and 2023. This is a problem, because battery availability is the biggest hindrance to the growth of EVs. Not only are there just not enough batteries going around to produce all the EVs that are in demand these days, but this scarcity is what drives out the cost of these batteries and the cost of the EVs. In fact, some energy experts think that in the coming years, the demand for lithium ion batteries is going to outstrip the supply. Europe specifically has been experiencing a major shortfall in the last year because they get most of their batteries from Asia, from China and Japan and whatnot, and global supply issues with COVID and whatnot has wreaked havoc on that. There are new plants coming online in Europe to address this, and that's a good thing, obviously, but there's also the problem of raw materials. Most lithium ion batteries rely on expensive materials like lithium, nickel, and cobalt, all of which have to be mined and usually in only specific places around the world. And the price of these individual raw materials can fluctuate. Lithium actually tripled in the last year, which added about $470 on average to the cost of every EV. The point is lithium ion, for all of its great attributes, is constrained. And if we want to boost the production of EVs and get more of them out there, then we need to find better solutions for the non-mobile, the stationary energy storage solutions, so that as many as possible can go into the EVs on the road. Not to mention phones and computers and other mobile applications. And this is why we keep hearing about all these new battery technologies. Everybody's scrambling to find the cheapest, most sustainable option until the day that we can finally create an arc reactor in a cave with a box of scraps. Ironic. Iron Man reference in a video about iron air batteries. God, there's so many layers to this onion. Now that I've said the thing, the thing that I say in all these videos, again, let's talk about iron air batteries. So much like the aluminum air battery that I covered just about a week after Matt Farrell did, 
Aluminum air batteries fall into the category of metal air batteries, where the power is stored and released through the oxidation of metal. With metal air batteries, the anode is made of metal, and the cathode is oxygen, basically. And the electrolyte, of course, is just water with stuff dissolved in it to help improve the conductivity. Yeah? Lose the puppies? Doesn't, doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Okay. They need to see what I'm talking about. Yeah, okay, yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I just thought, you know, I could do this to sort of differentiate this video from beating a dead horse. Yeah. It has nothing to do with the subject. Okay. Well, you know, it, it stops being funny, but then when you keep doing it, it eventually, you know, it not working at all. Okay. Desperate? Pandering and desperate? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, of course I want people to like me. I mean, I, I think it, it goes back to that time in the second grade when I was going to the... Uh-huh. Bit's gone on too long. Yeah. There's nobody on the phone. They all know it. Yeah, okay. I'm just talking to myself here. Okay, yeah. I mean, yeah. How do I get out of it, though? I don't... Yeah. Just cut to an animation and pretend it never happened. I can do that. As I said before, iron plus water and oxygen equals iron oxide, or rust. In this chemical reaction, rusting releases electrons that pass through a circuit as current. All this is pretty similar to what we talked about with the aluminum air batteries. The difference with this one is that this process can be reversed. In other words, you can recharge these. Yeah, it sounds like magic, but you can unrust iron by adding a current from the outside. And because you can recharge it, it's made from abundant materials, and it's totally recyclable, this was actually considered an option for electric cars back in the 70s and 80s. In fact, iron has a theoretical energy density almost twice that of lithium-ion batteries. So why aren't we seeing them everywhere now? There are a few reasons, the first of which being a short cycle life. So yeah, while we're clapping and celebrating the fact that they're rechargeable, it's important to point out that, um, they're kind of just barely rechargeable. Cycle life refers to the number of times a battery can be charged and discharged before it starts putting out less energy than was put into it. For example, nickel and lithium based batteries can be recharged between 300 and 500 times before you start to see any kind of significant reduction of energy. Significant meaning 20% less than a fresh battery. Uh, they can be recharged thousands of times before they're completely dead. Early iron air batteries can be recharged 20 or 30 times. I don't have to do the whole thing, but that's less. Later models did improve on that, but it's still way short of competing battery options, so it kind of faded away. Why do iron air batteries have such short cycle lives? Well, I'm glad you asked. In most batteries, it's usually because the, the metal itself gets corroded. All that oxidizing and unoxidizing and re-oxidizing takes its toll after a while. Iron air is a little bit different, though. In the case of iron air, um, the iron anode theoretically could be recharged up to about 10,000 times. In this case, it's actually the cathode and the electrolyte. There's a membrane on the cathode that regulates airflow, and that membrane can become contaminated with the electrolyte, which leads to degradation over time. This can lead to corrosion that can cause the battery to sort of self-discharge. In other words, it can just be sitting there idle, but it's losing energy the whole time. So these are the kind of problems that have stymied interest with iron air batteries, but there have been a lot of improvements since then, like less reactive materials for that cathode membrane and more efficient electrolyte solutions. And now nanotechnology is getting in on the action. Anodes of iron nanoparticles have more surface area for the reactions to take place in. Nanocomposites of iron and graphene or carbon fiber can give even better results. The company that's making the most waves in terms of iron air batteries right now is a company called Form Energy. They actually have some plans to put some grid scale solutions out in the next couple of years. They claim to have solved all the aforementioned problems with iron air batteries, but they're keeping their method of doing so a secret. And I guess we're just supposed to trust them, as if Nikola Motors and Theranos never existed. But clearly somebody trusts them because they've raised $360 million in investment rounds. Two of those somebodies being Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos. So either they really are sitting on some secret sauce that we just don't know about, but maybe the investors do, or it might just be that the possibility of an iron air battery that can compete with lithium ion batteries is just that enticing. It doesn't hurt that one of their co-founders was the former vice president for products and programs at Tesla that focused specifically on grid energy storage. They've also got on board a professor of material science and engineering from MIT that was a big innovator in lithium ion back in the day. 
In fact, the words Tesla and MIT pop up quite a bit in the bios of Forum Energy executives. This is kind of the grid energy storage dream team. And this dream team claims that their battery can be a major step toward achieving a 100% renewable energy grid. You want Bill Gates money? Because that's how you get Bill Gates money. The individual batteries are made from 10 to 20 iron air cells that are stacked to form a battery about the size of a washing machine. And its anode is the biggest ever made, which actually speaks to the economy of the design because despite it being more metal, it's expected to run at less than a tenth the energy cost of a comparable lithium ion battery. This is, of course, just going off of their claims, as I mentioned before, Forum Energy is keeping the details secret. But it won't be long before we find out if it's all it's cracked up to be. There's actually a pilot program that's planning to go online in 2023 in Cambridge, Minnesota. It's called the Cambridge Energy Storage Project, and it's part of the Green Power Makeover by Great River Energy. Great River plans to, quote, eliminate coal from its power supply portfolio and add 1,100 megawatts of wind energy by 2023, unquote. One megawatt will be from the Cambridge Project, maybe with more to come. And Great River hopes that the project can help prevent extended blackouts, which have been a problem in the past. A blackout caused by a polar vortex left people without power for up to 72 hours in 2019. And another blackout kept some without power for 48 hours in 2003. This one was just caused by a software bug. On a personal note, I'm actually in the middle of getting solar on my house right now because of the, you know, the blackouts that we had this last February here in Texas. Um, I actually had friends that were literally burning furniture in their fireplace for warmth. And um, they were the lucky ones. There were around 150 people that died in that storm. Now, some might say that's all the more reason to not cut out coal and, and oil and gas because you know, we're already having people dying because of a lack of electricity. But Form hopes that their battery can help change the conversation by sort of stabilizing the grid. I guess we'll find out more when their pilot program opens. So what should we expect when it does? So Form makes actually rather modest claims about how their uh, batteries can help power the grid. The pilot facility is gonna take about an acre of land to provide one megawatt or 150 megawatt hours of energy. Watts are a measure of how much work can be done, while watt hours are a measure of how much work can be done over time. So in other words, Form is saying that their battery will provide one megawatt to the grid and can be performed for about 150 hours. Now there is a denser configuration that they're working on that could provide three times the energy on the same footprint. Now Tesla's Megapack, on the other hand, can provide about 250 megawatts or one gigawatt hour per acre. Uh, 250 megawatts is enough to power 75,000 homes. Impressive, but some quick math will point out that 250 megawatts can only last for about four hours from a Megapack. Now at one megawatt or 150 megawatt hours, this is clearly not going to power a whole city during peak hours or anything like that, but their focus is more on you know, cheap, long duration energy. And they even acknowledge in a blog post that lithium ion batteries will continue to provide the bulk of energy storage demand into the future. So they're not looking to replace lithium ion batteries entirely. In fact, some of their best use might be in sort of a hybrid configuration. So in times of low energy demand, the iron air batteries can provide low cost power. And then when demand peaks, the lithium ion batteries can kick in. But in emergency situations, these iron air batteries could provide days of emergency power, which could actually save lives. So is iron air the end all be all of battery storage? No, but no one specific battery is. Which as I was saying at the beginning is all the more reason to have a multitude of different battery types that can fill specific niches in the most cost effective and sustainable way possible. It's actually a really interesting time to be covering battery storage solutions right now, and who knows, maybe someday we will find that perfect battery that can do all things in all situations. And when we do, I will of course cover it here. Probably about a week after Matt Farrell does. So tell me your thoughts about the Iron Air battery down in the comments below, and uh, let me know if there's any other battery storage solution that you're excited about. And by the way, if you've been watching this video in total confusion because battery storage is just a bit much to deal with, um, I get it. But uh, maybe a good place to get a little bit more caught up is the electricity and magnetism course on Brilliant. In this class, you'll learn the basics of the forces that power our lives, including whatever it is you're watching this on right now. Through 95 interactive exercises, you'll learn concepts like Coulomb's Law, which I mentioned earlier, to capacitance, Lorentz forces, electric fields, and much more. And once you've absorbed all that, you can move on to some of the other courses on Brilliant, like the classical physics courses, the quantum mechanics courses, applied science, computer algorithms, even competitive math. And the thing about Brilliant that's so, well, brilliant, is it teaches you these things by solving problems. This wires your brain to think like a scientist and superpowers your problem-solving abilities that can pay off in every area of your life. Plus, you can do it on your mobile device and even offline, so you can take it with you wherever you go. And if you want to get a taste of what I'm talking about, you can try the first few problems of any of their courses for free. So if you're interested and you're one of the first 200 people to sign up for the premium subscription that gives you access to all their courses, you can get 20% off if you go to brilliant.org slash Joe. 
Links down in the description. Big thanks to Brilliant for supporting this video and a huge shout out to the answer files on Patreon and the channel members that are helping to keep everything afloat around here, uh, forming an awesome community and just being all around great people. I got some people to shout out real quick. We got some new members. They are David Milliage, Dark Nebula, Robin Green, Robert Lindsay, uh, Andrew Nurtov, Joshua Clark, Chris Wibber, Mark Johnson, Becky Newton, Megan Evans, Jeanette S, Daniel Erngren, <laughs> Alexander Verharen, Jorge Antonio San Marine, Martin Pina, Adam XC Beoab, DGS, DGS, and Rello Cameron. You guys gave me some challenging ones there. Thank you guys so much for signing up. If you would like to join them and get early access to videos, access to exclusive live streams, and get a fun little uh, badge by your name down in the comments, you can just hit the join button at the bottom of this video. Please do like and share this video if you liked it. And if this is your first time here, um, maybe check this one out too. Google thinks that you might like it and they know you pretty well. Or you'll find any of the others that have my little face on them and the thumbnails down below. And if you like it and you like what you see, I invite you to subscribe and come back with videos every Monday. So that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching. You guys go out there, have an eye-opening week, and I'll see you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.